Hello, friends. Welcome to Journey Through the Bible in One Year. My name is Taya Gobadia, and I'll be leading you through the scriptures. Welcome to day six of week one. Today we'll be reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 13, verse 5 to 18, chapter 14, and chapter 15. We'll also be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27 to 48, the book of Psalm, chapter 6, verse 1 to 10, and the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 29 to 33. Learning objective. Students will be able to cite textual evidence to support an analysis of key details in the Bible about Abram and Lot, the War of the Kings, Abram and Melchizedek, and Abram's promised son in the Old Testament. Here we have a picture of Abram and Lot in this beautiful land that they reside together. Genesis chapter 13 verse 5 to 18 and it reads, Lot also went where Abram had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelled in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, For we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please, separate from me. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. Or if you you go to the right, I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go towards Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent, even as far as Sodom. But the man of Sodom, were exceedingly wicked and sinful against God. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the temporary trees of memory, which are Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. So here we are. Um, We have Abram. We have his nephew, Lot. And we see this beautiful, beautiful land. But unfortunately, the land in which they were residing in was just, it was not enough space to occupy all that Abram had 
and all that Lot had because they were both very wealthy men and they had acquired a large amount of livestock as well as herdsmen. So it would often cause a lot of strife between the two groups. Now, Abram and Lot were never at war with one another. However, their herdsmen would constantly um, strife with one another because the land would was just not enough space to accommodate both groups. So to your left, you see groups of people fighting each other, and you also see groups of livestock. And Abraham said to Lot, please, let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren, which is another word of saying, another ways of saying we're brothers. Um, is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I'll go to the left. And then the Bible said Lot lifted up his eyes. And when he looked around, he selected the best part of the land. And he said, oh, okay, I'll just take the plains of the Jordan as far as Sodom. Once they separated, God spoke to Abram and he reminded him of his promise, the promise that he made to him. He said, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Genesis chapter 14, and it reads, and it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arya, king of Elasar, Chidiolemer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shimember, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zor. All these joined together in the valley of Sidim, that is the salt sea. Twelve years they served Chidiolomer. In the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Chidiolomer and the kings that were with him came and attacked Riphim in Ashtaroth, Kernem, the Zuzim in Ham, and the Emim in Shiva Kiriathim, and the Horites in the mountains of Seir, as far as El Param, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwell in Hezazon Tamar. And the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Ada, the king of Zebom, the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and joined together in battle in the v valley of Sidim against Chidoleomer king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arya, king of Elisar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of asphalt pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fell. Some fell there, and the remainder fled to the mountains. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their provisions, 
and went their way. They also took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. Then one who escaped came and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Memre, the Amorite brother of Eshcol, the brother of Anur, and they were allies with Abraham. Now when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Holba, which is in which is north of Damas- Damascus. So he brought back all the goods, and also brought back his brother Lot, and his goods, as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shiva, that is the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him. If you look on top, that is a picture of a turban tree. Then Melchizedek, king of Solom, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I would take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich, except only what the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, Anur, Eshkol, and Memre. Let them take their portion. So here we are. This is a picture of um, the Valley of Siddam. And here we have multiple groups um, fighting one another. Now, that was nine different um, kingdoms at war. It was four against five. And if you see all the way on top to the corner, Lot is in captivity. And the circles on the bottom, you see like a brown circles on the bottom with um, black spots in the center that represent the asphalt pits that people would fall in. I also have a map here um, that I obtained from BibleMappers.com. And if you look closely at the map, it shows the route that four kings um, took to attack the the five kingdoms. And it also shows the route that Abraham took to rescue Lot. Genesis chapter 15, and it reads, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Elisa of Damascus? Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house 
is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars, if you're able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years and also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to pass, when the sun went down, and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning burning torch that passed between those pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants, I give, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Ephim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the, the Gergassites, and the Jebusites. Student Learning Objective I can show an illustrated dialogue between Abram and God regarding his legacy using a flow map. So let us go back and recap what we just read in the scriptures using illustration. So the first picture, we see a dialogue, a conversation between God and Abram. God is telling Abram, to not be afraid. He said, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham had a burden in his heart, and he cried out to the Lord, saying, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Elisar of Damascus. Then Abraham said, look, You have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. So Abram's concern was he had no son. Um, He had no child to pass down his legacy. But the Lord um, promised Abram. He said, look towards the heaven and count the stars. If you're able to number them, And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. 
And if you see the last picture, is a picture of a man kneeling down praying. That man is Abram. And the Bible says Abram believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Using a plot diagram, let's summarize the scriptures that we just read. So Abraham and Lot were both wealthy men. Both men had a large amount of livestock and herd men. But unfortunately, there wasn't enough space for both groups to reside in the same space. And it caused some strife between their herdsmen. So Abraham and Lot agreed to separate. And Lot selected the land that separ- that appears to be the best. However, it was in Sodom where evil thrives. So later Lot was captured as a prisoner of war in the Valley of Siddim. When Abram found out about it, he immediately went to go rescue Lot. Fortunately for Lot, Abraham succeeded in rescuing rescuing him, and he rescued Lot, his goods, and others. And in the end, he gave God all the glory. And the scriptures ended with the Lord making a covenant with Abraham that his descendants will possess the land. Learning Objective Students will be able to cite textual evidence to support an analysis of key details in the Bible surrounding the Sermon on the Mount in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 48, and it reads, You have heard that it was said of those of old, You shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery for her in his heart. For if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For if it is more profitable for you, for it is more profitable for you of your members perish, of one of your members perish, than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast to hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife Let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, for whatever is more than this is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, Turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. 
You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collector do the same? And if you greet your brethren, only what you do, only what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do also? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Praise the Lord. So here we are, um, a continuation from yesterday's um, study. We still have the same heart that we had yesterday, but now we see based on the readings that there's more things um, that can lead to danger of judgment. Now, looking at murder begins in the heart. We see that the Bible says adultery can put you in danger of judgment. Adultery is when a married couple are together, but one is having a separate or the other or both is having a separate relationship outside of their marriage. And in the eyes of God, that puts you in danger of judgment. Um, is also s- mentioned an analogy, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, um, that was acceptable in the Old Testament. But Jesus is now teaching the people that that will put you in danger of judgment. Um, and now an eye for an eye means when one person committed a, a crime, um, that same thing they commit will be done unto them. So if someone kills somebody, then um, their punishment will be to be killed. Um, and and Jesus is teaching the crowd and the disciple that um, that puts you in danger of judgment. He also talks about the importance of walking in forgiveness. If someone offends you, forgive them. Be quick to forgive them. Um, if they ask for one thing, give them the thing and and um, just look for ways to be a blessing onto people and walk in forgiveness. Using a plot diagram, let us summarize what we just read in the book of Matthew. So Jesus continues praying preaching in the Sermon on the Mount, encouraging the crowd not to commit adultery or look lustfully at another. So looking lustfully lustfully at another is maybe it's not committing adultery, but in your heart, um, you have a desire to commit adultery. And in the eyes of God, it's the same thing. And Jesus also teaches on how sacred a marriage is and should not be taken lightly, and encourage the crowd not to swear by any means. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Um, Jesus teaches on forgiveness and encourages us to walk in forgiveness. He also teaches on love and encourages us to walk in love and to give love freely. Love even our enemies and also bless those who persecute us. The book of Psalm, chapter 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, or chasten me in your hot displeasure. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver me. Oh, save me for your mercy's sake, for in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? I am weary with my groaning. 
All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old because of my enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayers. Let all the people. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29 to 33, and it reads, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would have none of my counsel and despised my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Learning Objective I can compare Psalm chapter 6, verse 1 to 10, and Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29 to 33, using a double bubble map. So here we have, in the light blue, all the things that stand out in Psalm chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. And in the medium blue, we have all the things that stand out in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29 to 33. And in the purple, those are the things that they have in common. Now, when we look at the book of Psalm chapter 6, we see the author is King David. And in this prayer, he is lamenting. He is crying out to God. Um, He's consumed with all these thoughts of his enemies. He's anxious. He's pleading with God. He's praying for healing. He's praying for mercies, right? He's asking God to rescue him. And in the book of Proverbs, we see the the author is the son of King David, King Solomon. And he speaks to God's wrath. And he talks about a probate mind. Now, a probate mind The definition I listed below is when a sinner is so hardened as to feel no remorse whatsoever or giving or conscience for a particular vile act. So that means when a sinner is so hardened in their heart, they they, they don't even feel bad for sinning. They have no, you know, they don't feel no remorse about it. Um, They're okay with it. They're content with it. And that can that will lead to God's wrath if we don't repent. Now, what do these two chapters have in common? Well, both chapters encourages the reader, encourages the believer to turn from sin. It also speaks to God's mercy because when we repent, God will surely forgive. Now, I left the last purple bubble with a question mark because I want you to reflect on these two chapters and what is the Lord saying to you? What is something that they have in common? Feel free to comment or you can write in your devotion journal. Or if you have a notebook where you're taking notes, feel free to reflect and write what else comes to mind that they have in common. What are some similarities that you see between between these two chapters? Praise the Lord. We just concluded today's lesson. So my question to you is, as you're reflecting on the word that we received today, um, how does it apply to your life? How do you feel? You know, is there anything in the scripture that stood out to you? Um, is there something that made you sad, maybe happy, maybe not really sure or excited? Uh, maybe you're excited about something that the Lord is doing or the Lord um, put something in your heart. Uh, something in the scriptures really jumped out and spoke to you. Feel free to um, write it in your journal as the Lord speaks to you through his word. Write it down um, and, you know, know that we're standing in agreement with you and we're praying it through whatever promises of God that he has spoken over your life. It shall surely come to pass in Jesus name.
Now words have power. There's life in our tongue. God has created us to rule and to reign, to decree something, and it will be established. So we're going to use our words to speak life over our lives. Okay, so feel free to repeat after me or read along with me. I am loved, John 3, 16. I am protected, Isaiah 54, 17. I am forgiven, 1 John 1, 9. I have eternal life, John 3, 36. I do not lack, Philippians 4, 19. I am called, Jeremiah 1, 5. I am blessed, Psalm 5, 12. Chapter 5, verse 12. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, verse 14. It's going to be a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. So I list some references that I used today. I used um, a map from BibleMappers.com. All scriptures are taken from BibleGateway.com. Um, I'm following the one-year Bible reading plan um, by Rose Publishing. And if you look at the description below, it has a link. If you choose to um, order, you can. Or you can follow along with us. Every day I list the scriptures from that plan. I also use um, Canva.com to create these slides and animation. Congratulations, you just completed day six of week one. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. I pray that he will continue to speak to you through his word. I pray that he begins to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I pray that he'll put in you a hunger and a thirst for his word in this season like never before. God bless you and have a blessed day.